What's up YouTube? Welcome to another video. So today is April 26, 2023 and uh, gold and silver are uh, pulling back a little bit. Um, we'll get into that and more but what I'm really doing is showing you my latest gold coin pickup. If you haven't done so already please like the channel, subscribe, check out my website my road to wealth and freedom link is in the description below. I just uh, updated some of my uh, other coin articles and that. Go check those out. I appreciate all your support. Thanks so much. Uh, I had a had a crazy amount of comments and uh, and and likes and that about my last video about um, selling a, a position in silver. Um, Keep them coming. I like this stuff. I like the conversation. Quick disclaimer though, I'm not a financial advisor. Please do your own research before doing anything like buying gold or silver or following any of the strategies I discuss on this uh, YouTube channel. Channel is for entertainment purposes only. So yeah, in my last video I said I, I sold my silver position uh, that I had basically in that Sprott physical silver fund. And uh, just basically kind of took profits. Um, it's uh, still down from where I sold it. And it's looking like we're headed for a credit crunch uh, and a major recession. And my guess, um, gold and silver are going to fall um, pretty hard. Um, will they recover after that? Sure, they typically always do, especially once, you know, the government and the central banks respond by, um, you know, QE programs, um, you know, fiscal stimulus, that type of stuff. Um, so I fully expect that, you know, um, there'll be a major, like, you know, a quick pullback and it all, it, but honestly though, it all depends on how quickly, uh, governments and central banks respond, um, with stimulus. If they don't immediately, like in, in the COVID thing, uh, in 2020, it was within a week or two. They came up with their plan and they kind of just used a bazooka and just attacked everything, sort of buying junk bonds, everything under the sun, mortgage backed securities, you name it. They did it and started sending people checks. That caused a really sharp correction in gold uh, and, and, uh, and silver, and then they just shot right back up. That may not play out. If you go back to like 2008 and nine. Um, it was a more of a prolonged sell-off and downturn in gold and silver. And uh, and uh, they did kind of bounce back after, you know, the stimulus programs and that were announced, but it took a little bit of time. And that is the big debate. Um, what, how, how will governments respond? Can they respond as quickly as they did in those prior um, crises, because the situation is dramatically different. We have really high inflation right now, and there's a real danger that, you know, at the slightest um, sign of trouble, if they quickly pivot and, and launch into, you know, stimulus programs and that um, it's going to send inflation soaring, um, which won't be good for anybody. So, um, there's, uh, there's just a lot of risk, um, uh, you know, whether, whether, whether you believe in the long-term value proposition of gold and silver, um, uh, there's still substantial risk, uh, of a major pullback and, um, things can bounce on the bottom for a while too. We saw the last decade with gold and silver, they were just basically left for dead after 2011. And, um, uh, you know, my, my sense is that, Again, taking the long-term view, gold and silver, especially gold, will be higher, you know, five to 10 years from now. I'd like to think that silver would be higher, but, um, you know, it has a long history of like being in the, being in the dump. So, um, who knows? I still have my physical silver position and, uh, and still have my physical gold. I don't trade in and out of those positions. I hold them for long-term, you know, wealth insurance, that type of thing. Uh, but it's just important to be realistic. What I'm doing with these things here, you know, this is bullion. It's a beautiful one ounce gold coin. Yes, this is bullion. This is kind of typical, you know, wealth insurance. It's four nine fine pure gold. It's just it. It's going to, I'll make money off this or not, depending on whatever the spot price of gold is. And I'm good with that. Uh, these other coins are are actually like historical 
um, gold coins. They do have bullion value for their gold content in that. But they're also really interesting examples of some historical gold that I that I've uh, purchased before. So you get your German 20 mark gold, the Russian five, five ruble, the Netherlands uh, Ducat and, uh, you know, the Franc. Uh, anyway, these are a little bit different. I don't really care about the gold price when I'm buying certain coins because these things, in addition to their bullion value, also have collecting numismatic value. Um, you know, this uh, Russian five ruble, uh, I paid uh, a lot more than the gold content for this coin. Um, you know, a lot of these, sometimes you can get them around spot. It really depends on the type of coin, you know, the year, the condition, that type of thing. Um, you know, sometimes you can get them at or near spot, uh, sometimes a little bit more. It really all depends on, you know, the, the coin, the rarity, condition, that type of thing. Um, so... Uh, in my last video, I said I, I purchased a, a gold coin, and uh, I'm going to showcase that today. This is my Romanian coin. It's from 1944. Um, it's brilliant, uncirculated condition, 0.1895 ounces. So it's about, I think, 90, just under 92% uh, fine gold. 20 lei or lie. Just a beautiful, beautiful gold coin. Um, it has on the pit, on the front of it. It's uh, you know it looks like a soldier from World War Two, World War One, and this sixteen oh one. There must have been some war in Romania in sixteen oh one. On the back, again, you have this like eagle with a crown and and, and that cross. That's also a kind of a stake. Uh, and around that is the eleven or twelve counties of Transylvania that were annexed by the Hungarians in nineteen forty from Romania. So in the middle of the Second World War or the or outset of the Second World War, Hungary, uh, or Hung Hungary um, annexed these uh, counties of Transylvania from Romania and it really kind of, you know, rubbed them the wrong way. Um, uh, in 44, the, the Soviets came across the border pushing the, the Germans back on the Eastern Front and, uh, and um, as they liberated Romania, um, I don't know, they must have got their counties back and struck this coin. I don't really know the the complete details uh, of this, but this is a really tough coin to find, especially in this condition, BU. Um, and uh, I'm just really happy to have uh, found it and been able to acquire this piece for, for my collection. This is really not bullion to me. This is, you know, a real kind of collectible. It has numismatic value it has like uh, brilliant and circulated it's just a beautiful coin um these aren't like this isn't like the rarest coin on earth or anything like that but it is a really cool historical piece from a country that you don't often see gold coins from um what caught my eye was um just you know it's number one is from romania i'm not really sure how many gold coins uh come out of romania i i guess at one point they did have um you know, a certain certain number of gold coins uh, that they issued in circulation. I think those were in the early uh, 20th century, 19th century, that type of thing. Um, but it, it is definitely uh, a very interesting piece and, uh, and one that I'm proud to own. So uh, again, that's why I kind of picked this up, this stuff here. Um, so I noticed some, somebody commented last week that, you know, yeah, you sold silver at, you know, half half its all-time high and to buy gold at all-time high well you know i'm not buying this for bullion value um i bought this for collecting value uh, numismatic value and th the truth is one of the interesting things fascinating things about collecting coins uh that i've found is that you know it doesn't really matter um you know, yes, I sold my Sprott Silver Fund. Uh, it was at its all-time high, by the way. Um, you know, silver is only 25 bucks, uh, you know, down from, you know, it's half the, you know, 2011 high of 50 bucks or whatever. Okay, yeah, that's true. But the actual fund that I sold was at its all-time high. So um, I decided to kind of take profits there. So, you know, could it go higher if silver doubles? Yeah, sure, for sure. But, um 
since it was launch, I guess, um, since inception, which I don't know how long it was, but anyways, that's why I kind of took profits. But this stuff here, um, the reason why I bought this, I don't really care if gold's at an all time high or not. I bought this because I might not be able to find another one at the right place, at the right price, at the right time for a very, very long time. It's not like coins like these just show up every day. Um, they're really tough, tough to find, especially in this condition. And I've learned um, in, in my, you know, collecting, coin collecting journey that um, there are certain coins that, that um, are really tough to find. If you pass them up, you might not find them for a very long time. Um, life's short. I have automatic buys on a whole bunch of coins in my head. You know, if I see them uh, come up at auctions or if I see them at coin shops and that, I just buy. I'll figure it out afterwards because I know I might not. I Number one, I'm going to regret the heck of it, out of it. And number two, I, you might not find them for years to come, especially in that condition. Maybe at that price, that condition, like the stars kind of align. So I am hoping, you know, we are facing a big credit crunch. I am hoping that, you know, there's going to be um, uh, uh, depressed prices for gold and silver. And, you know, people are going to be forced sellers. Um, that is the best opportunity um, for an investor to make a whole lot of money. And, and that is the best opportunity for a coin collector to acquire really great pieces at fantastic bargain prices simply because nobody's in the market buying right now. Um, so if and when that happens, I'm going to be right there buying. I got a lot of cash on the sidelines and uh, and that's what it's about. You can make big money in these pullbacks. Um, so take advantage. Take advantage. I will say uh, just another thing too. I've been seeing and hearing a lot of people, you know, they're buying the dip. You know, last year the markets were down 18, 20 percent or something. They've been buying the dip. You know, the market's on sale. The market's on sale. And and I used to think like that too. Um, I've I've seen the market on sale a few times. Um, the best sale was in 2008 and 2009 when you could literally buy, you know, shares in the S&P 500 for like, you know, half price. There was a 50% drop in the S&P 500. Um, a 10% correction, a 20% correction, that is not, you know, the sale of a lifetime. That is not back the truck up uh, and load up. Um, the S&P 500 can fall 50% from where it is now. Um, I've seen it happen several times in my life. And, uh, and that's not to say that it's going to stay like that. Um, but if you're positioned well, you can, uh, you can take advantage of that. Um, so yeah, I just want to kind of throw that out there as well. Uh, cause I do feel that, um, you know, for those, for those who are, uh, prepared, uh, you know, debt free cash on the bank, on the sidelines, you know, you have some insurance in the form of like bullion, gold, silver, that type of thing. You're going to be all set um, to take advantage of, of the bargains that I see coming. Now, it may happen quick. One of the things I will say, you know, in 2020, the market was also on sale. There was a panic and you want to try to invest into these panics because you can get bargain prices. Um, but the issue is... Uh, and unlike 0809, it seems that you know governments and central banks uh, respond a lot quicker. So, you know, it's really tough to say. If you wait too long, you might really miss a substantial um, uh, percentage of 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 the discount on you know the broader stock market or individual stocks. Um, that said, if you jump in. There's no guarantee that that help will be on the way immediately. It may, it certainly might, like what we saw in 2020, within a week or two, they were out there just, you know, buying everything and you know, doing everything they can to kind of, you know, um, prop up asset prices. But that's not a guarantee this time simply because inflation might come roaring back. Um, so anyway, there's just st still plenty of uncertainty. Um, 
around all this stuff. So that's why I am just kind of slowly and consistently saving, investing, building wealth. And that's the name of the game. I am looking at, uh, at uh, growing, building my passive income. And I am fully expecting some incredible bargains coming up because there there's red flags all over the place. You know, commercial real estate, residential real estate, um, what else? Uh, credit card debt. You know, it just there's all the signs there that the consumer's really struggling, uh, and virtually everything they own is going to come come down in price from their homes to their investments. Um, you know, um, and that's kind of where you get. Uh, that's where you find the bargains. That's where you. That's where where if you're nimble, if you are cashed up. Um, that's, that's where you can really build a substantial amount of wealth. And, um, that's kind of what I'm waiting for, what I'm looking for. Um, so I got some cash in my Equestrade account. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to roll. And, um, I hope you guys are too. That's it for today's video. Thanks so much for uh, subscribing. Thanks so much for being fans and sharing this content. I hope you appreciate it. Let you know, let, let me know in the comments below. Uh, what you think about, uh, you know, this coin, the strategy and all that good stuff. Take care.